child. Because you are a child. <laughs> no, I, I take that back. Most children would have a better sense of values. Henry, I haven't been to town in three weeks. I can't live like this. I feel like a prisoner. I have no objection to your going to town. What am I going to do when I get there? I have no money to shop with. I'll have cocktails at the hotel with the ladies. For your information, the only reason the ladies of this island congregate at the hotel is to show off their new clothes from Paris and the States. Then you're better off not going to town. I didn't come here to enter my wife in a fashion show. I'm trying to run a plantation. You're missing the point, Henry. I'm not interested in competing with the rest of the women. It's as much my money as it is yours. And I have a right to spend it any way I like. You might as well save your breath, Louise. As long as a bank account's in my name, I'll decide how the money's to be spent. I won't let you sacrifice our future. Our future? Oh, that's funny. Oh, that really is, Henry. My husband. The funniest man on the island. I have so many little anecdotes. Such perfect cocktail conversation. What a pity I can't share them with the ladies. Louise, that's enough. No, it is not enough. You crack your whip and expect the world to snap to attention. Well, there are some things even you can't control, Henry. And one of them is our future. Louise! I'd read about the murder of Henry Gibbons, but it was the furthest thing from my mind. After two years without a vacation, I'd finally succumbed to the lure of travel folders. The colorful adjectives describing the Caribbean had hooked me. And my good friend, Lieutenant Weston, hooked, line, and sinker. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> you gotta do better than that, Hub. You better put the brake on. <laughs> Sake. Uh, it's good we don't have to depend on my fishing ability for food. We'd probably starve. Well, I wouldn't say that. You know, the people of the tourist guide service said the skipper of the boat we're going to be on guarantees all the customers catch fish. I'll believe that when I land my first marlin. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, that'll be our ticket. Mr. Maris? Oh, well, hello. <laughs> no, no, I'm John Weston. That's Mr. Maris there. Mr. Maris, yes. I'm Madeleine Giraud from the Tourist Guide Service. Oh, about our boat reservations. No, Mr. Maris, that is not why I'm here. I recognize your name when I saw it on the reservation list. I was in the United States a year ago. I read in the newspapers how you help people who are in trouble. Uh, go on, Mr. Ruff. Please, would you read this? Oh, I read about the Gibbons case. Then you know the police have arrested my friend, Louis Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Maris, Louise could not have killed her husband. Mr. O, excuse me for being blunt, but Mr. Maris and I are on vacation. We don't intend to do any work, not any. I'm sure you understand. Yes, but what I read... Mr. Maris, please. How can you enjoy your vacation when an innocent woman is in prison? Well, what makes you think that she's innocent? I mean, uh, beside the fact that she's your friend. During the night of the murder, Louise and Henry quarreled. 
But they were always fighting. Everyone on the island knows this. Is that why the police arrested them? Partly. You see, during the quarrel, Louise became terribly angry. She took Henry's gun, but at the last moment, the thought of what she was about to do frightened her. She threw the gun away. That's her story. No wonder they locked her up. But that is the truth. There is a pier in the plantation. She ran to the end of it and threw the gun out into the water. And while she was away from the house, someone killed her husband? Yes. Herb! Did anyone see her throw the gun from the pier? No. But that is what she did. She would not lie to the police. You'd be surprised how many people do. Mr. Rue, I suggest you find a local attorney, one who is more familiar with the laws of evidence in this part of the world. Our laws are not so different and injustice. It is the same everywhere. Goodbye, Mr. Maris. <laughs> Congratulations, Em. You know, I really didn't think you could do it. After looking into those big, beautiful eyes of hers. Well, a man has to draw the line somewhere. John, if you'd committed a murder, would you tell the police where you'd put the murder weapon? No, not unless I wanted an engraved invitation to the gas station. Then can you give me one good reason why Louise Gibbons would tell them that? Unless, of course, she's innocent? Oh, well, look, Herb, we... We've only got 14 days. Well, I... I guess it wouldn't hurt to use one of them. Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> feeling cold steel in my hand. I was afraid that if the gun remained in the house, someday I would use it. So you ran from the house and threw the gun off the pier. How deep is the water at the end of the pier? I'm not sure. It was dredged several years ago, so that the cargo boats could come in and take the plantation produce to market. Mrs. Gibbons, I understand you didn't get along too well with your husband. Henry wasn't what you would call a spendthrift, Lieutenant. Whenever I needed money for a dress, to have my hair done, even for personal articles, I had to beg for it. The bank account, like everything else, was in his name only. Did your husband have many enemies? There were few. What successful man doesn't? But nobody that would have wanted to kill him. What about the people that worked the plantation for you? Henry was the owner. He was respected. They took his orders, all except... Yes? Well, it's not important. I was going to say all except Claude Germain, the overseer. Did your husband have trouble with him? Well, Claude came with the place when we bought it four months ago. He'd been there for over six years. His ideas were different from Henry's. And Henry wasn't content to be the gentleman farmer. He wanted to supervise everything himself. And the more he did, the less Claude felt he was needed? He was very unhappy. He had an idea that Henry wanted to let him go. Although, I don't know why he should worry. Claude's good, knows his job. He could have got work on any other plantation on the island immediately. Now, what about the gun, Mrs. Gibbons? Was it loaded when you took it from the desk? Why, I don't know. I, I didn't think to look. Well, we'll find out in a couple of hours the diver's going after it. And for your sake, Mrs. Gibbons, I, I hope he finds it. Um. According to the dredging company, you'll find the bottom sandy in through here. Small rocks further out. Now off you go.
Inspector, why the drums? What is it, a celebration? Uh, not necessarily. Superstitious natives. They're always finding one reason or another to beat those things. When you've been around here as long as I have, you'll pay no attention to them. Herb, look, I think he's found something. He has the gun. Good work. You weren't down more than two or three minutes. Well, Inspector, are you satisfied now that Mrs. Givens was telling the truth? Just the opposite, I'm afraid, Mr. Maris. Fully loaded. Two cartridges have been fired. Two were found in the body of Henry Gibbons. By morning, there was no doubt that the gun found in the sea beneath the pier killed Henry Givens. Any hope I might have had of proving Louise's innocence with the aid of the gun seemed shattered. Yet there were still some troubling questions to be answered. I have. Listen, we've got reservations on the Firefly, leaves for the fishing grounds, 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Oh, come on now, Herb. You're not going to let this thing spoil your vacation? It's too simple. Why would she tell the police where to find that gun? Who knows? Look, they ran a ballistics test, didn't they? And the gun proved to be the murder weapon. Right. So what are we waiting for? Let's go fishing. I still want to know why she told the police where to look for that gun. Oh, brother, look, she doesn't know the first thing about firearms, right? That's what she said. So it's just remotely possible she wouldn't know about a ballistics test or what it can prove. John, given the revolver was kept in the desk of their home, everybody in the house knew about that gun. Suppose the killer used a 38, hoping to frame Louise by exchanging it for the gun that was in the desk. Well, Louise Gibbons complicates the situation by tossing her husband's gun into the ocean. Right. Now the killer has to change his plans. Now he has to make certain that Louise leads the police unwillingly to the murder weapon. So he throws it off the pier, making sure it'll be found first. <laughs> oh, that's a very good theory, Herb, but all you got to do now is prove it. Now there's a chance I can, providing he didn't take the gun out first before planting his. Herb, where are you going? Find out how far a girl Louise Gibbons' size can throw a 38 caliber revolver. How much do those bars weigh, huh? 42 ounces. Too heavy for singles. That's what a 38 weighs. How'd you guess? You men can joke, but I do not really understand. You want me to throw this metal from the pier so you can tell how far Louise threw the pistol. That's right. Do you mind? <laughs> not if it will help Louise. All right, throw it. Hey, pretty good. See where it landed, John? Good eight yards beyond the spot where the diver found that gun. One more, Mr. Rue. Just so we can be sure. What? What does it mean? Just the natives. But they do not beat the drums without reason. Sometimes to celebrate the birth of a child. Or a death. Sometimes to give a warning. But always there's a reason. Well, we better hurry up. It's going to be dark in another few minutes. I will throw it, Lieutenant. Now. Next morning, after a visit to the local library, Weston and I again went to police headquarters. You did throw the gun from the end of the pier. Yes, I thought I told you. Give me your hand. What? Your hand. Give it to me. You're right-handed. Oh, yes. 
Unless she was facing well to the right, the gun would have gone straight out from the pier. It could be somewhere among those rocks that Daniel's mentioned. Oh, I hope so. Well, so do I. I want to go fishing. Mrs. Gibbons, did your husband ever have a serious quarrel with the natives? Did he ever break a native law or superstition? Oh, no. Henry knew better than to interfere with their beliefs. Did he know the local Hung An or voodoo priest? How did you know about our Hung An's, Mr. Morris? <laughs> we did some uh, research at the library. Oh. Well, every native community has its own Hung An. Henry was on the best of terms with Mama Katu, the voodoo priestess who lives at the plantation. Whenever she needed anything for the sick or needy, she came to Henry, and he never refused her. This Mama Katu, does she control the drums and the messages they send? Yes, I believe so. Were the drums beating the night that he was killed? What? I, I don't remember. I've become so used to them. Is it important? Well, it could be. It depends on the message they carried. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Maris. Yes. You're Jeston? That's right, sir. Miss Giroux called. She told us you were coming and suggested we give you our full cooperation. We? Oui? That's right, sir. The other servants and myself and Mr. Germain. Oh, I see. What are those drums beating for? They, uh, they carry a message, sir. What kind of message? I do not know, sir. I do not know about the Voodoo Society. Do you know where we could find Mama Tutu? No. No, sir. Cooperation? Well, that's what he said. Mr. Marist? Mr. Weston? I'm Claude Germain, the overseer. So is anything I can help? Yes, Mr. Germain. Where can we find Mama Katu? Well, she's probably in the jungle, standing over the drums. But, uh, why would you like to see her for? Well, I thought she might interpret the drums' message for us. Oh, it's a simple one. They're trying to get the guides of justice to free Mrs. Gibbons. Do you think they'll succeed? You're the lawyer. I'm not. I just work here. Now, if there is anything else I can do before you go back to town? Not at the moment. We'll just take a look around. Suit yourselves. You know, Herb, I wonder why he went to all the trouble learning how to read those drums. Funny, I was just wondering the same thing. Well, let's get the gear. I can change the house. Are you sure you know how to use that stuff? According to the band I rented it from, all I have to do is remember what he said. Oh, fine. Well, do you suppose they're waiting for an answer? <laughs> John, stand the brush. Who or what was that? She's wearing voodoo charms. Suppose that's Momica too? Come on. Go to the dark place. You will burn in the dark fire. You will not harm me. We don't want to harm you. We want your help. You are a good longer. 
I'm a good one. Wonder? Spirit. It's the diving gear. Mama Katu? Yes. I am Mama Katu. How can I serve you? Is she kidding? Mama, was Monsieur Gibbons your friend? Yes. He tried to be a good man. Do you know who killed him? Yes. But, but you are a great Wonga. What you come to Mama Katu? Don't you know all things? I'm testing you, Mama. Who killed Gibbons? The one you suspect. The ones who come in the dark. The evil ones. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Mama Katu, Gibbons was shot. A bullet pierced his heart. Yes, because he did not know about the intruders who come in from the sea in the dark when the battery calls. When the what? The battery. Somebody up there has good eyes. When the battery calls, they come from the sea? We. Oui. The evil ones in the dark. How many? Who are they? The evil wongas. The evil ones. The evil wongas. John. Let's try for that gun. Now remember, Herb, you're a lawyer, not a skin diver. Word is getting to me. really wasn't very spotty, Lieutenant. You're supposed to be on a vacation. What were you smuggling in here, Jermaine? Wild gas? No, Mama Katu gave me the idea. The evil wangas that came with the drums played. The drums worked for you and your friends, didn't they? Yes. They worked for me. And Gibbons stumbled onto your secret. So you worked up an elaborate frame-up to get rid of both Gibbons and his wife. Matters! Well, I thought I'd be one up on you, but you beat me to him. How did you know? Oh, the usual routine, checking the background of everyone on the plantation. He's an alien. We knew there was quite a lot of gun running being done, but we couldn't quite put our finger on it. Guns, a search of the plantation will probably reveal an arsenal. Mama Katu has offered her full cooperation. There won't be any more trouble. Come along with me, Mr. Germain. Dear Inspector, you want this. Thank you. That's true. What's she doing? Putting the Grigri on him. If the chair doesn't get him, the Wongas will. 